So whenever we work in a team, it's natural to have to deal with conflict. In fact, when we have teams with no conflict, that's when we know we have trouble. We're being too polite with each other. We're really not dealing with issues. Pat Lencioni wrote a book called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. And if you look at it, the fear of conflict is actually the second pillar of these dysfunctions. So I'm going to talk about it in a little bit more uh, context here. But let's talk about how we deal with conflict personally before we look at how we do it with other people. So David Rock is an Australian guy. He runs a uh, organization called the Neuro Leadership Institute. He's actually taking some of the brain science that's being discovered and being worked on all around the world and trying to apply it to human behavior and leadership. So one of the only things they've found so far is that is a kind of an overriding functional structure of the brain is the fear greed uh, concept. Actually, you know, just using those words actually has a bit of a negative connotation. So let's cross those out and let's talk about threat and reward. And biologically, we're built to provide safety, to preserve ourselves, to avoid threats. And in fact, it's about 10 to 1 the amount of energy we'll put towards getting away from a threat versus going towards a reward. So we're really built uh, unevenly around threat. And so when we're talking about conflict, what we got to do is think about what is threatening to us. There's basically five different concepts that our brains are actually unconsciously looking at all the time, many times a second. First one is status. Are we higher or lower status than the person that we're with? And when our status is threatened or when we go to a lower, uh, lower status uh, position, then we're going to feel a little bit of a threat response. We'll have two ways of dealing with that. One is an aggressive way where we, we boldly uh, you know, go outward and push the other person away. The other is if we withdraw, neither of which is a very healthy uh, way of dealing with things. When we're shut down, we're actually not able to collaborate. We're not able to be creative and really come up with better solutions. The second one is certainty. It's not to say that we know everything that's going to happen, but we're oriented. We know kind of the shape of the room we're in, you know, the temperature, you know, kind of what our time frame we're dealing with, et cetera. We have that orientation. You know, if we have more uh, certainty or we're better oriented, then it's better than if we're less oriented. For example, you know, the room I'm in right now. I wanted to see it before I came to actually do this. Once I saw the room, I was able to deal with it, and I wasn't so much under a threat. Next is autonomy. Inside that certainty, inside that orientation that we have, how much choice do we have? When I get backed into a corner, I'm like a ferret. I'm going to scratch my way out. So when we have more or less choice, then we're going to be able to feel like we're under threat or not so much. Next one is relatedness. It's friend or foe. And we're actually wired for foe. There's only three circumstances where we're not thinking that someone is a foe. One is babies are typically not threatening. Secondly, if the person is extremely attractive, because we're actually more oriented towards procreation and propagation of the species than we are to our own, uh, own safety. And lastly is when we're drunk. If we're drunk, everyone's our friend. But really, if you look at it, even our eyes are designed in a way that our peripheral vision is much more acute than our central vision. It's to see that uh, lion jumping out of the weeds you know, to, to eat us. And when our boss walks into our room, uh, it's actually no different. Our bodies react you know, with the, all of the cortisol and, and all the you know, kind of stress responses that we would if a lion was walking out because we really, in, in our minds, can't differentiate between the two. And then lastly, our sense of fairness. Is there an equitable exchange going on here? And do we have more or less fairness relative to what's going on? So first, we have to look at, of these equations, what are our drivers? As I mentioned earlier, autonomy for me, choice, is really the big driver. It's what drives the role that I'm in, the clients I work with, et cetera. Everyone will have different kind of thumbprint as to what's important to them and what's going to create a threat or a reward response. So when we're in a team situation, it's really important to, for us to understand what are our drivers, what are the things we care about, and what are the things that are going to shut us down with our, our threat response. Then we can start looking at what are the things that are going to do the same thing for our colleagues. When we disregard this or we don't understand this or we don't know it, then all of a sudden the ability for us to deal with uh, conflict is, is compromised quite a bit. 
on this slide, you'll see there are so many things that get in the way of us really dealing with the issue at hand, the issue you can see in the center there. However, um, we've got all of these different individual relationship, environmental and informational obstacles to get in the way. And if you think about it, we put so much time and effort into the work that we do that it's really difficult for us not to be emotionally connected to it. But when, in fact, we're dealing with conflict, what we're trying to do is get to the core of the issue and find out what is the best uh, outcomes that we can be producing here. I think the last thing to look at is, again, once we're able to deal with the threat response that we have, both of ourselves and the people we're working with, then how do we actually use this operationally? Well, out of uh, the T group that I did over at the GSB, this model was presented. I've been working on it personally for about 10 years, and I still have a long way to go. But I think it's a very simple and uh, effective uh, model for dealing with conflict. First of all, we have our intent. Only I know what I intend to do here. In fact, you're seeing this uh, play out as we speak. I am doing whatever behaviors I am. Uh, as I'm trying to project this uh, content to you, but we both are able to see the behavior. You don't know necessarily what my intent is because I haven't told you that, but you're seeing my behavior. It's gonna have a certain impact on you, and only you know what that impact is unless you give me feedback. Now we have the concept of the net, which is being responsible for what's on your side of, of, of the equation here. If you look at it, it's easy for me to jump over the net, so to speak, and blame you for what you did to me. However, I, I didn't, you didn't do anything to me. You did what you did. You had the intent and then the behavior, but I have to be responsible for the impact it has on me. So when we're able to say, when you did X, it had this impact on me, that's an effective way of giving feedback to someone so that they can then say, well, that's not what I intended here's what I intended, and then next time our behavior can be adjusted in some fashion such that we're able to um, have a much more productive uh, relationship. You know, in my role, in, in my job, and working with other people, I'm asking for feedback all the time. When people deliver the feedback, it hurts, and I gotta, I'm human, right? But what I gotta do is be able, to, be able to put that aside and say, you know what? This person had this expectation of me, and I let them down. That's, that's being able to put the hurt aside. The real benefit is when I'm able to say, okay, what behavior will have the impact on you better match the intent that I had from the beginning? When we're able to do that and do that on a regular basis, even in the point of impact when something happens where we do have this conflict brewing, it's a much better way of dealing with things. So hopefully this will be a, an effective model for you to use in your own relationships.